Hey there guys, Mike from We Build Stuff. So, we had a little flood happening and it took us a while to figure out what it was. What it turned out to be was some broken copper pipe inside our wall going from our crawl space up to basically feeding our upstairs bathroom. It took us a while to figure out where the leak was, we ripped the walls apart, and I think I'm going to use that copper tube and uh, turn it to something else. Here's the, uh, the crack in the pipe. So... Let's see. So this was up inside the wall. It wasn't cracked that much. It's cracked more since I got it out. But it was dripping all the way up in there. Let's see, things have gotten a little soggy. I got drywall to replace. Down, 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 down. And I've cut the pipe here. Yeah. It's somewhere up. It had to go all the way up there. So I got some drywall to fix. So this, instead of putting new copper or new pipe copper pipe in, I'll be using these shark bite couplers with some half inch pecs. But that's all well and good, but I wonder if I can melt this down and turn it into something. The next day. Hey, what's up people? So today we're in the metal shop and I'm gonna do something with that copper pipe from inside my house that I found that was leaking. So behind me I got some oxyacetylene, I've got some crucibles, and I've got a couple little molds that I'm gonna to try to make some ingots out of. Why am I wearing these glasses? Because fire can be very bright with the oxyacetylene. But we'll see how that goes. All right, let's do this. Ooh, dizzy. So I'll be using this copper pipe that was from inside my house that old broken stuff. I'm gonna try and melt it down, remove any impurities. I'll be adding a little bit of jewelry style borax to the mix. Once that is melted down enough, I'll be picking it up with these tongs here. And while it's melted, pour it into one of these ingot molds. I probably don't need to make the big one ounce style one. That one, eh, maybe. I'm gonna probably go for this tiny one here. That will give me something that looks like this. Now this is old copper sheet metal, just saved up from scraps that we melt down, turn it into ingots, and then we can take it on over to the rolling mill, roll it through, and we should come out with something after 10 minutes or so that looks like this. So this is copper we've rolled it down and we can use this to make jewelry or rings or something uh, there's different sizes we're going to see how this goes uh, so i'm going to set the camera we'll see what happens So now that I have an ingot, I'm going to take this ingot and pass it through the rolling mill and try to get it stretched out into a piece of wire. So let's see how this one goes. Now, after every couple passes, you can see that it's starting to get flat on both sides now. I need to go and heat it up again to soften it. I need to anneal the metal. If I keep pushing it through the rolling mill, it's going to work hard in it, and there's a chance of it cracking and then just breaking. So let's go heat it up again. 
Now, I don't want to melt it. I just want to soften it. So I'm going to get it just before it starts to turn a cherry red. And then I'll let it kind of cool a moment before I, I quench it. Now, sometimes if you have cracks, you can also heat it up and remelt it. Maybe you have to make a whole new ingot. But we'll see how we do. Quench. And then dry it off. You don't want to have anything wet going into your rolling mill that can cause rust. All right, back at it with the mill. I'm gonna go anneal it again, then come back. So, it's slowly getting stretched out a little bit thinner on both sides. I'm putting it through those sections there, and you're seeing some grooves start. Those are all going to get worked out eventually, but it's slowly getting longer and longer. This is just a temporary setup here. I don't have a permanent place to bolt it down. All right, it's starting to get a little bit hard to push it through, so I'm going to kneel it once more. Okay, so there's an issue. I started forcing it instead of slowing down and annealing it again, and you can see it's cracked, it's broken in some places. So I'm gonna have to melt down the ingot and do it again. I'll fast forward to when that happens. Shazam! Oh, look at that, and another new ingot. Okay, off to the rolling mill. So it's slowly getting longer again. I'm taking my time, being careful for cracks. It's almost time to start squishing this down more into wire. So every time you go through this, every five or so times, you want to take a close look. You want to make sure that there's no cracks forming like there was last time. I see a small crack starting here. If I see a little crack like that's forming, I'm going to go anneal it. Get it soft and try to kind of squish things together. I think I've got that crack out. We're gonna try this again. If it keeps on cracking, I'm gonna to have to actually remelt the ingot, but add some other material and kind of create it into, instead of just being copper, into an alloy. Adding another type of metal to this will help create kind of a mixed uh, type of metal, but it might help increase its strength. All right, that was a couple passes. Let's go anneal it again. Uh, if I go to try to straighten this out now, you know, by hammering or squishing it in a vise instead of it looking like a noodle, I'm probably gonna crack it right down the middle. So I wanna soften it first before I do that. If I was to heat this up directly like that, probably one part would almost just not be able to handle it. It's like sticking something cold 
or sticking something hot directly in something cold right away is going to make it brittle. So I heat it up slowly. I'm going to let it cool for a moment before I dunk it back in the water. Still pretty hot, starting to get gray again or back to its cold color. Then we'll dunk it. It's cool how as soon as you uh, cool it off, that little surface scale from the heat kind of breaks itself off. So the actual profile of it, or sorry, the, uh, the front, it's finally starting to get square. It's going to curve every time, so now and then I just, again, anneal it, straighten it back out, keep going. We're starting to get a little bit of cracks you can see on the top. But if this doesn't work, it came out to a nice experiment. So this, so far, I've been following this one set. I'm going to start moving my way down until eventually I have a, probably about the middle. And then I'll be taking it to this one so that I can have a flat surface and one, the other side should have a small curve on it. Uh, just when a couple passes, you can see how much longer it's finally getting. This is awesome. Look at that, just a couple more passes, you can really see the difference in length here. Again, there's still some, you see some cracks hitting on the surface. Let's anneal it and hope that uh, those cracks don't go through the whole way. Now it's actually, since it's getting thinner, I'm going to reduce the heat because thinner material has a, more of a chance to blow through. Very careful not to let it go molten and start melting. If I get it just before that point, I think it's okay. But I'm still pretty new to this, so this is, this is a lot of experimenting. So look at that. See the length is starting to really get a lot easier to work with. I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do with this thing when it's all done. I could bring it down into tiny pieces of wire um, and make some very simple wire jewelry with it, or I could maybe flatten it out and try to turn it to a ring. I think maybe we'll try the ring first for this one. I'm going to keep on rolling it until I get that shape. I think I'm going to stick it through the flat rollers and then move it over to here now. Just to get rid of some of that little surface bump. Okay, I'm going to kneel it one more time. It's going to start some cracks to form, and then we're going to take it to the other side over there. If any of you have any hints of you've done this kind of stuff before, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear how you have done similar things to this. This is really my first week playing around with this kind of stuff, so I'm by no means an expert. All right, this isn't gonna fit in there anymore. I'm gonna take it to the sink. I'm not going to rush this, I'm going to take it nice and slow and i got to remember to put it through the same direction every time now. You can start to see it rounded up here, flat down here. It's kind of wobbly, uh, so I'm just going to have to be careful how I put it in. I'm going to kneel it one more time and then back to the mill.
So as I look closely at this piece, I can see some of the edges have started cracking. If you look closely here, starting to break off. That's probably about the extent I can do with this machine. If I can get maybe four inches or eight centimeters or whatever out of this, I should be able to make one ring and I can just melt down the rest. So I wasn't anticipating the entire piece here to come out perfect, but let's see what we can do with it for a future video. Cheers. Thanks for watching.